I think we're in John chapter 16. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We choose to rejoice and be glad in it. And then we have morning calling it this morning Beauty Cook Studios. I'm a Tessie. What's going on? Oh, we're in John chapter 16, is it? John 16. Yeah. John 16, yeah. Ngozi, thank you. Oh my God. Ngozi, where are you? Yeah, got it. Our declarations quickly, and then we'll go to John chapter number 16. John chapter number 16, verses 1, 2, 33. John 16. Hi, guys. Morning. How was London Church? Hey, London Church was on fire yesterday. Pastor Mo. Milan Church was great. Abuja Church, great time. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. First time here, Ruth Green, welcome. We study a chapter of the Bible every day. And so um, we're studying John chapter number 16 this morning. So find your Bible, hoping it's not on the phone that you are using. Gist, what I called was awesome. That's good. PH was on fire too. That's good. Jesus Putakot was awesome. Abuja was lead. All the churches. Fantastic. The gospel prevails. Amen. Let's make our declaration at the count of three. One, two, three, go. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. I'm the beloved of Abba. All my sins are forgiven. I'm passionately loved by God. I am powerfully helped by God. I am kept and protected by God. I enjoy angelic assistance. I am irrevocably blessed. I am eternally forgiven. I am the healed of the Lord. I enjoy divine health. I have the favor and the wisdom of God. I am fruitful. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. I have the multiplier's anointing. Nothing is against me. Nothing dies in my hands. I am never stranded. The supernatural is natural to me. All things are working together for my good. God loves me more than the devil hates me. And grace is working for me. Glory to God. Amen. Amen and amen. John chapter number 16. John chapter number 16 from verse 1 to 33. John 16, 1 to 33. These things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. These things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. Can you imagine? And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. Jesus is just preparing them for the persecution that will come. That they will kill you, they will talk, talk down at you, they would, <clears throat> if it's 2024, blog about you and say crazy things that are not real. They will do it, and when you're doing it, they will think that they are doing a service to God. There will be character assassination. 
they will beat you up if you know what i mean and um jesus is saying they did it to me and they'll do it to you too so jesus is preparing um the apostles for persecution that comes with the gospel persecution that comes with the gospel you understand that but now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nonetheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. As I'm not doing this because I just want you guys to feel bad. It's because I want you to, to, to be comforted. Yeah? It is for your advantage that I go away. For if you do not go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. That means if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. I will send him to you. Who's the helper? The Holy Spirit will not come if I'm with you, except I am, I die, buried, resurrected, and then the Holy Spirit is released. And when he is come, he will convict the world of sin and righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. 12. I still have many things to say to you. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. You cannot bear them now. I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has gone, he will guide you into all truth and he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. Glory to God. He will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you all things that the Father has are mine. Let's go back to verse 13. Verse 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. Watch this. For he will not speak on his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak watch this and he will tell you things to come 14 he will glorify me so the holy spirit glorifies jesus what does it mean to glorify jesus the holy spirit will help you elucidate on the back end of his death his burial his resurrection what christ has done that's the job of the holy ghost the Holy Ghost doesn't have a job of his own. The job of the Holy Ghost is to reveal Jesus to you. He will take off. He says he will glorify me. He will glorify me. The Holy Spirit will glorify me. The Holy Spirit will not glorify himself. The Holy Spirit has no job but to glorify Jesus. He will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. So when you say Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, he's saying Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He will take of what is mine and declare it to you. He will declare it to you. So the Holy Ghost will take of what is mine and declare it to you. The Holy Spirit helps you understand Jesus better. The Holy Spirit breaks down the power of his death. His burial and resurrection to you. He would declare it to you. That's what the Holy Ghost does. He now says, All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that He would take of mine and declare it to you. 
he would witness. Like I taught you in church yesterday, the will of the Father, the work of the Son, the witness of the Spirit. Glory to God. A little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while you will see me because I go to the Father. Then some of the disciples said among themselves, what is this that he says to us a little while and you will not see me again a little while and you will see me and because I go to the Father? And they said, therefore, what is he that he says a little while? We do not know what he's talking about. Now, Jesus knew that they desired to ask him and he said unto them, are you inquiring amongst yourselves about what I said a little while and you not see me and a little while you see me? Most assuredly, verily, verily, most assuredly, I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned to joy. You will weep and lament, and the world would rejoice. And you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned to joy. A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she gives birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. Therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again and your heart will rejoice and your joy no one will take from you. I need to see, I need you to see something really powerful there. Verse 22. Verse 22, really, really, really powerful. Really, really, really powerful. Verse 22. I want to track with me, verse 22, really good. Therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will take from you. So he's saying, I'm here with you right now and I'm giving you heads up that I'm about to die. And once I die and I'm, I go through the torture, you will be sorrowful. You will be in so much pain. But as soon as, maybe Pastor Musun got it. As soon as I resurrect, after the resurrection morning, when you see me as the Christ, when you see me as the Christ, you will have rejoicing and then this joy no one can take from you. So until God is revealed as the Christ to you, you don't have joy in his fullness. At best, happenstance, happiness. But once you see the resurrected Christ, you come into joy that no one can take away. So I've never heard this anywhere before. Correct. So Jesus is with them telling them. But he knew that right now, before death, burial, and resurrection, they don't have joy. They don't have joy. He knew that they don't have joy. What he said, you have sorrow. But once I resurrect and you see Christ, you will have a Galio joy. 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 Jesus is saying to them, because only Jesus can give real joy, not fake smiles. Therefore, you now have sorrow. They are with Jesus and he said, you have sorrow. But I will see you again. And when I see you again, your heart will rejoice. And your joy no one will take from you. Your joy no one 
will be able to take from you. Glory to God. Glory to God. No one will be able to take from you. Because that joy now lives inside of you. Now it's standing in front of you. And that's not the same as inside of you. 23. And in that day you would ask me nothing. Most assuredly I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name. You ask the Father in my name. Oh, glory. I don't know if you... Mm. In that day, you will ask me nothing. That means you will not have to ask me again because you will become me before the Father. Uh, the God, the God class, the God class. I need your minds thinking. 23, Philip Okafor, in that day you will, in that day you will ask me nothing. That means you will not need to ask me to tell the Father. Most assuredly I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, because you, you would have taken my position. You ask the Father, ask me. Come on. You ask the Father, ask me. You're not asking, asking me to ask the Father. You are now taking my position. You are now in the God class. You ask the Father, ask me. Kabaye, do you understand? This is so good. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Until now, you have asked nothing in my stead. Until now, you have not asked as sons. Chilola, yes. You, do not, you have not asked as sons. You are asking me to ask the Father. He says, and that day you will become me and you are asking directly because you are claiming now your sons. And you, and you will receive that your joy may be full. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. 25, these things I have spoken to you in figurative language. But the time is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figurative language that I will tell you plainly about the Father. I will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day you will ask in my name and I will, and I do not say to you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loves you and because you have loved me and have believed in me that I came from, from God, I came from the Father and have come into the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, See, now you are speaking plainly and using no figure of speech. Now we are sure that you know all things and have no need that anyone should question you. By this we believe that you came forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do you believe? Do you believe? Indeed the hour is coming, yes, has now come. That you will be scattered, each to his own, and I will leave, and and will leave me alone, and yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulations. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In the world, you may have, it says, this is the same unto, spoken unto you, that in me, you may have peace. But in the world, you will have tribulations. Be of good cheer. I have what? Overcome the world. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yeah, it's 8 o'clock. Let's do prayer as you go and then we can, can take it up from there. Prayer as you go, take it up from there. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to God. You see, this morning, morning corona is literally a service. That's, that's word. That's, that's powerful. Declaration 20. Declaration 20. Declaration 20, 20, 20. Declaration 20, 20. Declaration 20. 
We're praying Declaration 20. 2-0, Declaration 2-0. So we're praying with this morning. Declaration 2-0. Glory to God. Glory to God. Declaration 20. Glory to God. Ooh. Ephesians 2.14 is where the declaration is coming from. Ephesians, Ephesians 2 verse 14. Ephesians 2.14. In Christ we have peace that passeth all understanding. We have the peace of God. God is at peace with us and we are at peace with him. We are confident that God is not angry with us. God is not angry with us. Amen. Today, we decree and declare that God is the burden, that God, our Father, and your Father, this burden is heavy. And I want to pray for people who feel like they are under a heavy load, heavy burden. And Jesus helps you through that um, season of your life. But this is directed to you this morning. And I want us to pray about that this morning. Today I declare that God, this burden is heavy. And this yoke is not in my power to bear. I decree that the burden you carry that is heavy and is not in your power to bear. We put them on the Lord and accept his yoke because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. We accept it because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. In the name of Jesus, we activate the victory we have in Christ. I decree concerning your life that you activate the victory that you have in Christ. And then you are done with the turmoil and the burden that you are bearing right now. In the name of Jesus. I decree that we trust the Lord for manifestation of abundant peace of mind and in every area of our lives. In the name of Jesus. We speak peace. I decree that we receive that you receive the light of God and his sweet yoke. And uh, you trust in him to give you rest this week, this month, in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that you are not anxious about anything. That you are not anxious about anything. That you rely on the presence of the Holy Spirit for inner peace in the name of Jesus. That you do not stress over anything. That stress will not overpower you. That you have a clear and a calm mind in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that the peace of God that passeth all understanding will guard your heart and your thoughts in the name of Jesus. I speak to your heart. Peace be still right now and know that Jesus, Jesus' love is unconditional in the name of Jesus. I speak to your mind. Peace be still that you know that the Holy Spirit will never leave you nor forsake you. I speak to your soul, peace be still, that you know the Father, that you know that God the Father is the infinite King of the universe. So rest in Him. In this moment, we decree that we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that God gives you rest from all worries and all anxiety, and you will know that you are being cared about in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that you trust in God in the name of Jesus and you experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than human mind can understand in the name of Jesus. I declare that God's peace keeps you, guards you, comforts you, upholds you, strengthens you and keeps you till the end in the name of Jesus. I decree peace be still to every storm in the name of Jesus. Peace be still in the name of Jesus. I decree the peace of God in the name of Jesus. Peace be still that you enjoy the peace of God in Jesus. Much less than we speak peace. 
upon your weak, that you are not shaking, you are not moved. You rest in the peace that only Jesus can give. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. You enjoy peace, peace that passes all understanding. In Jesus' matchless name, tomorrow morning, we, I decree that the burden is moved out of your life, moved, moved from you. Burden has, the burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. The burden is lifted. It is lifted. It is lifted. In Jesus' matchless name, amen, amen, amen. Hey, guys, tomorrow we do John chapter number 17, Jesus' prayer. Jesus' prayer is John chapter number 17. The Lord's Prayer is not even Matthew chapter 6. It's more John chapter 17. You see that tomorrow. That's the Lord's, when Jesus prayed. It's in John chapter 17. We'll do that tomorrow morning. Come with your friends every morning, um, 7.30ish, as we do morning communion. And this will bless you. Yeah, let me know um, how this has helped your Bible study, how this has helped your your day because we get to prime our day and then we we can run ahead and have a beautiful day ahead of us i love you all have a flourishing week ahead of you with great grace blessings i pray the blessings of peace you would have peace i pray for a home right now and i rebuke that tension in the name of Jesus, I see, I see a young lady who's tense, anxiety. I see a home and there's just tension. We release the wind of God to blow it out. In the name of Jesus, we release the wind of God. We rebuke and release the wind of God. In the name of Jesus, and we decree peace. We decree peace. We decree peace has come. We decree the peace of God. We decree peace of God over the storm, over relationships that have gone south of our relationships that have gone south. We release peace of God. We release the peace of God. We decree that you're humble enough um, to know what to do. We release the peace of God. We release the peace of God, the peace of God, the peace of God, the peace of God. Peace in your home, peace in your life, peace in your heart, in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Whew. Glory to God, peace, blessings.